Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Entertainment Expansion. We are your hosts, Tyler Callahan and Mike Ferrante. Mike, how you doing this week? You know me, Tyler. I'm chilling. That's good. That's good. We got a, I think we got a good episode coming today. Uh, we are talking about John Wick one and two. Uh, Mike, why are we talking about John Wick one and two? Since they're kind of old. Well, I mean, if you live under a rock, you would definitely think that. But everyone who's seen the films or have even heard of the films know that the third one is coming out in roughly two weeks. Am I right about that, Tyler? Yeah, just under two weeks now. So we are looking forward to the end of this trilogy because I don't believe there will be any more John Wicks after three. I think it was their plan to make three and then that's it. So this week, in honor of John Wick, we'll be talking about John Wick 1 and 2. And then in two weeks from now, when we both see the third one, we will be talking about John Wick 3. Yep, that's the plan. So let's just start off with the first one, John Wick. The first one, called John Wick. Uh, Mike, what did you like about John Wick? Well, I think the better question is what I didn't like about John Wick. Uh, That's a point, yeah. Well, it's uh, absolutely nothing. The first John Wick was mind-blowing, in my opinion. Like, at first, I thought it was just going to be another, like, low-budget action film that had, like, no real good plot, no real good acting, just something entertaining to watch. And I was right that it was entertaining to watch because everything about the film was on point. The acting, the action, the plot of the film, Keanu Reeves really nailed it. And there are several scenes throughout the movie that were just, like, mesmerizing. Like, when he's going through the nightclub, the red circle, to try and find uh, his uh, target... And you got the whole techno in the background. And I'm not a techno, but that's what really made that scene. Yeah, definitely the uh, the nightclub scene was a highlight for me. I think my favorite moment. But um, yeah, you're right. There really is nothing really wrong with this movie. And like you said, going into it, it seems like a basic action movie, whatever. But not only does it have top-notch action, it builds the world it's in out really fucking well it doesn't yeah. bore you to death with oh this is what happened this is why john wick's a badass da, 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 da. just from people talking about him as soon as someone mentions john wick everyone looks like they've seen a fucking ghost Baba it's like yaga. Baba yaga yeah oh oh he killed the guy with the fucking pencil oh you took his car i'm not going to touch that car because it's john wick's car you know so it's how they don't just beat you over the head with why he's a badass. Because not only does he just show it in the movie, but it builds up the world around him. And then one thing I do like is the, the system they have, like the economy they have set up, like the Continental, right? You know, you, you do hits, you get these coins, you get these cool services. I really like how they did build out this small universe for Hitman anyway. Yeah. I mean, maybe that is the one issue that I have about this universe is okay. the coins. So you're telling me that one coin can get you the hotel room in the Continental. When you buy a drink at the bar, it's a one coin. So where, like, I'm I'm just a little confused on how much this coin is worth. It seems to be a drastic difference between a high-end hotel room and a drink at the bar. You you have a point. The, um, again, well, yeah, they they they, ha- they have details of how the economy works. You're right. The finer details, like, okay, if I get my clothes dry cleaned after a hit. Is that one coin, which obviously is more than a drink, but then it goes back to the point, well, the drink is worth one coin. So I guess it depends. I get, I guess the reason behind it would be, well, the Continental is really only for active hitmen. So if you're doing a lot of contracts, you're going to rack up coins anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. As, as seen by uh, John Wick's, I don't what, what would you even call it? Like the, not when you say bucket, but like where he uh, digs out his uh, old gear. Right, he has a lot of coins to spare. Yeah, I like to call that his life savings. Yeah, basically. But yeah, the first John Wick was definitely a solid movie with great act. Uh, yeah, even great acting too. Like I, this is really is a good role for Keanu Reeves, right? Yep. Yeah. So great acting, great action. Just again, like you said, overall, it's a great movie. 
But yeah, John Wick 2. Mike, did you think the sequel lived up to the hype or no? Yes, I do. 100%. I mean, just in the intro of the sequel alone, you have the entire first movie's kill count in the opening act. This is a huge statement saying this movie is going to be even bigger. There's going to be more going on. And it's kind of foreshadowing for what the movie really is. Because how the first one introduces this universe and expanded it a little bit. The second one truly expands it. Like, I mean, we're talking about worldwide expansion, underground expansion, when you have the bums who are actually secret hitmen. Yeah, the second movie definitely, like, really expanded it. Yeah, because... Again, the the whole bum system, right, with uh, Lawrence Fishburne, like that was completely just from the second movie. That didn't even exist. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, basically, I think one thing that points out how wide this hitman or assassin economy is is uh, when 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 the hit goes out for John Wick, and you just see everyone get a notification for it. Yeah, like, as he's running away, yeah. and everyone's phone starts yeah. going crazy. And I did like how the we did get to see a pencil kill. We got to see a few of them. Yeah, what was it? I think two, at least. Three. Three? Yeah, it was three guys at a bar with uh, two pencils. Yeah, I definitely think overall this is a great sequel, right? Usually a lot of franchises have an issue with the sequel landing its mark. But uh, definitely this was not one of them. This is a solid movie. If I did have issues with it, it would be the villain himself. It's kind of annoying, but, like, I guess... Yeah, it was kind of annoying, but, Mike, what did you think of John Wick actually pulling the trigger and killing him inside the Continental? Do you think that made sense for his character? Kind of, because, I mean, at that point, he was just kind of like, uh, you know what, fuck it. Like, I'm going to kill this guy regardless. I'm not going to wait any longer. It doesn't matter if I kill him ten years from now when he leaves the Continental finally, or I just do it now. I'm just going to save myself time now. And he was also not thinking about the consequences. No, he clearly wasn't. He was like, all right, this guy that I gave a marker to redeemed his marker. When I did his task, he then set a $7 million hit on me right after it. Meanwhile, we could have just both walked away and it would have been fine. But nope, he had to do the hit. He also burnt my house down. Therefore, I'm just going to kill him. Yeah, no, I definitely I definitely get why he had to die. Because, okay, let's say you walk away. You do have to worry in a few months or a few years, whenever he leaves, he's going to put out another hit, and then you have to always watch behind your back. So, I get it. I just feel like, I guess you're right. It's He really was, was not thinking clearly, because up until now, John Wick was a cool, calm, collected person for the most part. So, to just blatantly, in front of Ian McShane, the manager, shoot that guy at the table, it's like, at first, it doesn't really seem like it fits John Wick, but if you go into the idea that, you know, like you said, he's got to die at some point. Might as well be now. Yeah, and you also have to take into consideration the second movie takes place directly after the first one. So yes, it does. His car being stolen, his wife dying of cancer, his puppy being killed, all happened in that short time frame. So he's like already weeks short. At most. Really? Yeah. He's already short fused as it is. And then when this happens, he's like, you know what? It's really everything's pushing him over the edge to become the person he once was. Yeah. Baba Yaga. Yeah. Because in the first movie, his wife was taken away from him. He got out so he could have a wife and live a life outside. Second movie, his house gets taken away from him. Now he's got no longer has a house, no longer has his wife. His car is all smashed up. So what he got out for no longer really exists. So therefore, all he has is to go back to his old ways. Which, from the trailers we see in John Wick 3, is a crap ton of killing. Oh, yeah. So, I think we'll wrap up not with uh, now the question of how excited we are for John Wick 3, because if you can't tell from now, we're both obviously very excited for John Wick 3. And this isn't, you know, the Marvel, you know, the MCU, so we won't have a full ranking. But just a simple question, Mike, which one... Did you like more? One or two? It's really hard to even... It's hard to compare them because they're they're the same franchise, but I feel like they're different. One yeah, was, I know what like, you mean. One was Revenge Story, which was amazing. Two was uh, kind of revenge, but mostly just 
a Hitman movie. But I uh-huh. think I'm going to have to go with one because a lot of the stuff we saw in two was just an amplified version of what we saw in one. So like the nightclub scene that's hands down my favorite scene was recreated in the second one at a, that Italian festival in Rome, which was also badass, but I don't think anything can really take. Oh, with the underground tunnels next, like yeah. un- underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it would, it would be the first one as well. I think because at least for me, I liked, like, like you said, the second one is more of an extension of the first one, just turned up a notch. And also for the first one, I liked the villain better than the second one. Yeah, but then you got to take into consideration the second one had more than just one antagonist. True. You had Common, who was on a mission of his own to kill John Wick, which one of the best fight scenes we've seen in film, honestly. Because like in the in the first one, we didn't really see John Wick use hand-to-hand combat as much as we did in the second one. Because it, he really wasn't challenged in the first one. No. Not at all. This one, he's going up against other fully trained hitmen, technically in their prime. Yeah. When John Wick's been out of it for a few years. But all in all, I'd say it has to go back to the first one. Yeah, because, you know, don't forget. What, isn't it Willem Dafoe that's in the first one as, like, John Wick's friend? Yeah. <laughs> Good old Willem Dafoe. Yeah. All right. So I think that's about it for this week's episode of Entertainment Expansion. We are going to patiently wait for John Wick 3 to come out. But until then, Mike, if anyone has any thoughts about John Wick, where can they let us know? Well, they could either let us know by email, which is entertainmentexpansion at outlook.com, or on our Instagram page, which is properly labeled entertainment expansion. We look forward from hearing from you. That is right. As always, thank you for listening, and see you next week.